everybody. Welcome to one of our sort of digest and really comprehension segments of CES 2015. As we are at this closing part of the show, we're starting to put it in perspective. And today, right now, it's TV. It's our TV show, one of my favorite parts of the show every year. I get to sit down with Katz, David Katzmeyer, who is the big brain behind TVs in our New York labs. Well, no. But your head's a normal size, interesting. Right, right, it, it somehow fits in there. It's a 4K brain. You know, <laughs> right. it's the same size as a regular brain, but twice Tighter the pitch. Yeah, yeah. That's it, okay. Right. So we're going to round up what's going on in TV. Now, of course, TV needs no introduction here at this show. This is, and has always been, a TV show first and foremost, yeah. this is kind of your house. Yeah, the TVs make great demos on the show floor. They're big, they're bright, you can pack the booth with them, you can show whatever you want on them, you use them to demonstrate the TVs themselves or the technology yeah. you know, in the TVs. So yeah, this has always been about the big TVs. 105 inches, you know, it's the big one. Of course, year. we always have those. Yep. Let's get on to some of the specifics. Now, 4K TVs are not new here, but they seem to have flooded the floor with a sense of reality this year. Where are we going on 4K adoption in the year ahead, Dave? Well, CES, you're not going to see anything but 4K TVs in the booths. There's very few 1080p TVs. You look around, manufacturers have only announced 4K TVs. They'll, they'll talk about their 1080p TVs a little bit, but really they want you to focus on 4K. That's where the profit is. That's where the new technology is. So, you know, 4K's pricing is going to fall a lot. We saw the Vizio P series announced last year, yeah. 50 inches, 999. That's still a pretty good baseline price. So that Vizio P is kind of the go-to inexpensive 4K right now. Is that right? Yeah. I think we're looking at some of these right here. Vizio, of course, has always been a great, well-performing, but value brand. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. It, and so if we're talking about a set that's a thousand bucks for 50, it doesn't sound like any premium at all. No, it's, it's well, you can get a 699 50-inch 1080p TV from Vizio that performs pretty good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, the TV prices are at that point where guys are not eking that much profit, especially from the 1080p's. Yeah. So they, they'd have to get the 4K, they have to get the prices up. And interestingly, with that price erosion of 4K, you see guys like Samsung and LG, the leaders in TV, introducing newer technologies that are even bigger and better than 4K. So you had curved, you have SUHD, which is Samsung's new term for their you know, better 4K TVs, yeah. and LG with its OLED sets. Uh, as we take a look at what's going on with these screens, the resolution of 4K is better, the uh, amounts of color it can show are theoretically better, mm -hmm. and HDR. We know that from still cameras. Yes. What does HDR mean in a television? Because okay. I didn't hear that at 4K, around 4K last year. Yeah, the HDR is something new this year they're pushing. It was uh, Dolby Vision sort of showed some demos last year, but this year they're, they're telling about a lot more. HDR stands for high dynamic range. The uh, idea is that you can have a really dark black, which you can get with the better TV technologies today, yeah. but also a brighter white. So picture like a glint of sunlight off of some yeah. armor or a lightning or so things like this, that. The, the fireworks going off, normally yep. the bright part's blown out, right? Yeah, yeah. This is really bright specular highlights, they're called. And it, at the end of the day, you see a really realistic picture. The problem is that the displays of yesteryear cannot get that bright. They can't produce, uh, you know, our beloved plasma couldn't really get that bright. Yeah. And OLED can get that dark and get that bright. And Samsung says it's SUHD TVs, SUDs, if you will, are able Suits. to get, right. Who Suits, knows? SUDs, <laughs> uh, we don't really know yet. They haven't told us how to pronounce it. Um, but those sets also get extremely bright, up to, up to 1,000 nits. So at the end of the day, that's where they're going is to make this contrast, uh, which is a lot more visible, by the way, than 4K resolution. Interesting. Uh, yeah, make that show up on the screen and give it a lot of pop. And yet it's a lot harder to sell contrast. Consumers right. have always seen these amazing pumped up numbers. I mean, they'll put any number on a TV, right? Yeah, absolutely. And 4K, they kind of get. It's like, okay, it's a number, of, it's a grid of pixels, sounds right. better. Contrast is a harder sell, color space is a harder sell, but it's yeah. more important. Yeah, well, it's true, and those are a lot more difficult to manufacture. It's a lot, e it's oh. really easy to throw a whole bunch of pixels on an LCD TV. LCD technology, look at phones, they have, you know, 4K resolution phones now, they're tiny. Yeah. So it's really easy to get, you know, a whole lot of pixels on the screen to get the, uh, the HDR stuff, to get the high dynamic range, to get the color space. It requires you know, better TVs and a lot better manufacturing, more expensive TVs, more LEDs, and in the case of uh, LG's OLED, an entirely new TV technology. Now, I want to get to content around this because that's really the big issue. The last thing I want to ask you while we're on the hardware, though, is you and Ty and our TV lab have been very skeptical of curved TVs right. since the big splash a year ago. Yeah. You still there? Yeah, I mean, the curve didn't really do much for me. I lived with it for a while in my house. You know, the kids like playing with a fun house mirror and, Daddy, I'm, I'm, why am I so fat? But, you know, at, when, you, when you look at these curved TVs and you're at the home, you kind of forget about them after a while. It kind of becomes more of an aesthetic decision. And yeah. the curved TV premium is still pretty high. You know, you're looking at a few hundred bucks at least between the curved and the flat versions. So I don't think, you know, unless you really like that look, it's worth springing for a curved TV thinking you're going to get a more immersive picture, which is what they try to tell you. Okay, good to know. Now let's get to the content. 4K TV 
needs 4K content to look its best, correct? Right. Streaming seems to be the majority of the content offerings. This is first for TV. In the previous resolution improvements, it was carried largely on disk, on broadcast, on satellite. This is the first hardware up res that's been carried on the back of the internet, right? Yeah, so the streaming is here because it's really hard to do disk again. You know, you got to get everybody to agree to a disk standard, whereas with a Netflix and Amazon, they can just go, you know what, let's just make some 4K streams and put them out there. Yeah. So they're able to do that. They have decoding built into the TVs to get that streaming out there. One of the things we haven't seen at this show is a lot of announcements about new 4K content. Really hasn't happened much. Yeah, so we last have a lot year, of new stuff to show you. We've got the same old Netflix, yeah. YouTube, to a small degree, right, right. Uh, Hulu, Amazon, Comcast a little bit? Right, Comcast and, and Netflix, Comcast and Amazon at CES last year announced they would have streaming 4K by the end of 2014, and they did barely. They were like December when they finally were able to do it. Yeah, right. So, you know, these guys made those announcements. We haven't seen really many new announcements. Uh, we've seen a couple 4K hardware announcements, 4K Joey and a new prototype 4K yeah. Blu-ray player. That's coming by the end of the year, 4K Blu-ray. I want to ask you about that Blu-ray player. Right, okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? And here's that, here's that Joey, which by the way is a 4K uh, set-top box that feeds off their DVR. Yep. Feeds off their existing DVR, is that right? Right, right. It's, it's basically just to get the 4K hardware connection that'll, that'll go to your TV out there. But it's so interesting, I mean, it's basically their version of an Apple TV of a sort. Sort of, kind of, yeah. but it's also, it doesn't require a new DVR, a new 4K DVR, from what I understand. No, I, I, we're not sure exactly how it works, but yeah, this, this thing is basically just an add-on that enables your existing dish hardware to do, to do 4K. Yeah. Okay, now about that Blu-ray disc, um, are we really going to rebuy our disc library for a third time? Well, if Hollywood has its way, yes you will. <laughs> Imagine the Lord of the Rings 4K extended edition box set, you know, with all of them, The Hobbit and everything. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's what you're looking at. There it is there, there's the, uh, the first really mainstream prototype. Yep. 4K BD, That's the first right? First manufacturer, Panasonic, Panasonic jumped in and, and, and did this. I mean, all these guys are going to have 4K Blu ray players by the end of the year, and we'll see a couple titles out in 4K Blu ray by the end of the year. I think it'll be really interesting because you're going to have 4K Blu ray on one end of the quality spectrum. Then you're going to have 4K streaming Netflix and Amazon, where sometimes it's a little hard to tell that it's 4K. I was going to say, right. streaming doesn't always live up to the full potential of 4K, does it? No, and, and you know, they've been doing this forever with streaming. They'll say they're 1080p, they'll, you know, and, but it's not really. It's just a slightly better version. So they kind of play fast and loose with the definitions. But you know, you, you're going to need uh, a 4K TV relatively recent to get these streams on your set. There'll be a little indicator that says you're getting 4K. So you, know, you get the warm fuzzy anyway. I was reading in one of your pieces that I think, uh, I guess it's Netflix is streaming 4K at about 15 or 16 megabits per second you need. Exactly. Which, for per people who have a good internet connection at home, that's a pretty small slice. Right. For folks who have a basic broadband connection, that probably eats up most of it. It's tough, yeah. And there's plenty of places in the United States where you just can't get that, especially uh, on a prime time evening, you know, depending on your, on your provider. Yeah. So, you know, all that is, is still up in the air. The streaming thing is definitely at the low end of the spectrum, but, you know, 4K Blu-ray will give the video files and, and people that are really into getting that best picture quality finally an alternative, so that'll be nice. Still, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like we have more content available or imminent for 4K than we almost ever had on 3D Blu-ray. Well, you know, you'd, you'd think that, but 3D Blu-ray, they're still coming out. There's still quite a few of them. Nobody ever uses them, though. So, you know, you yeah. get the Blu-ray pack. It's got a 3D disc in there that you're just going to, you know, use for as a coaster, and then you can watch the actual Blu-ray disc of Frozen over and over and over and over. That was a usage problem, right. a real compelling use case problem. Yeah. All right, the pipeline, as we were talking about, a lot of old content can be rescanned yeah. from film yeah. to 4K. So Hollywood's got a huge vault they're looking at saying, we can make new money on this. Yeah, and, and so that's part of the idea is they'll be able to pipe out the 4K. They'll be able to add an HDR layer, which is pretty cool, and get that high dynamic range on a lot of these okay, things. Okay, so they can nail both those new technologies right. from an old vault print. And Netflix, cool, they announced that they're going to have HDR streaming at the show. So that was one you know, nice announcement. And is that part of the Netflix recommended label? Separate announcements. Netflix is also saying that they're going to be certifying TVs for what it's worth. Maybe it's a little bit like THX certification. Yeah. Whatever, they'll put a badge on a TV, but the, it, that's it, it, Netflix is, is doing HDR. Dolby is also doing some HDR streaming. So you're finally going to see some of this content come out, which is again looks a little bit better than we've seen in terms of uh, than 4K. Okay, and there's no 4K broadcast coming in the U.S. anytime soon, is there? No, no. They it, dabble in Asia and Europe, I think. Yeah, there, there's some stuff out there. Actually, Japan is talking about 8K. You know, they're, they're way ahead of the thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, in terms of the U.S., the, the cable companies and all those guys, they're having a hard enough time delivering a, a decent you know 1080i stream. <laughs> Right. Okay, now let's talk about the last area that was really big here, perhaps the biggest area, right. was not the res or the tech, but the policies and the offers. We saw the beginnings of what might have been hard to imagine a year ago, right. the unbundling of the big pay TV channel bundle, yeah. Sling Television. 
Yeah, and, and Dish Network uh, pretty much stole the show with this announcement. It's a $20 package that gives you access to ESPN, a few Disney channels, TNT, CNN, a, a basically basic cable. There's no broadcast channels on there, but for okay. 20 bucks a month, you can hook up an antenna or get, you know, for example, Hulu Plus and or any of these see, other things. as you can see, it's not just services. on TV. It'll be on phones, right. tablets, through set-top boxes, yeah. integrated into smart or connected televisions. About all they're missing, I think, is Apple and PlayStation for obvious competitive reasons. Right, right, right. And, and you, you might see that a little bit later in the year. There's right. also PlayStation View, which is Sony's service. They announced that before CES, and they're saying it's going to come out around the same time as the Dish service. Probably a little bit more expensive. I've heard an analyst say about 60 bucks for That's PlayStation the rumor, View. Yeah. yeah, and you get a lot more channels on it. So there's this proliferation of ways to get cable without subscribing to cable. Utilize your internet connection for live TV as opposed to segmented, episodic, you know, streaming stuff that you get from Netflix and Amazon. Yeah, so. which we've been doing now, but listen, there's nothing quite like live. And, and one key to these services that I think really appeals to the guys signing the contract is that you can't skip commercials. So the issue with the DVR is people could go through the commercials. Now, if you get this, net, this you know, dish service, you're not going to be able to blow through the commercials anymore. So. I thought about that, because there's no DVR in the mix. Right. And it is carrying the full broadcast commercial schedule. That's why Hulu Plus has like 1.5 stars on the you know the Apple Store. It's like nobody really likes those commercials, right. but you know you, you, you get what you pay for. So. Interesting. Okay, that's a, that's a very good point. Now, as we uh, look forward here, uh, what was the biggest story in television? 4K TVs, right. 4K content, or unbundling television? I mean, it was unbundling. It was it was the content side. I think. I mean, the 4K TVs have been around for a while. I think the TV hardware stuff. You know, it, it's really cool that they're getting these really high-end TVs with, uh, you know, that can get some really good image quality, and especially with HDR. That stuff's a little bit in the future, and the prices aren't really mainstream yet. Uh, the TVs, the 4K TVs that will be mainstream prices aren't going to have much better picture than the mm -hmm. current 1080p TVs. So it's going to be interesting on the hardware side to see where the pricing goes. But I think these guys are trying to get as much premium as they can while You were telling can. me that by end of the year, perhaps the 1080p TVs are almost, they almost moved to the bargain category. Yeah, absolutely. Which makes a lot of folks feel really good who bought one in for the holidays. Yeah, I, I <laughs> I think the manufacturers are holding their breath at the 4K TVs. Don't go to the bottom, the bargain category by that point, too. Uh, just give us a quick peek when you get back to base, back to New York, and you're back in the TV lab. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to getting in soon, maybe for the first time, or a refreshed model line? Well, we have right now in the lab a, a $10,000 uh, television that I'm pretty excited to review. Is I got the say, most expensive you've had in? It's, it's the LG 65-inch uh, OLED, so we're going to get a chance to crack wow. at that. Um, we saw actually some 77-inch OLEDs this year at the show. Uh, LG's putting out a couple flat OLED TVs. I called it the best TV ever last year because yep. it really is a beautiful TV technology. Again, really expensive. Uh, no, nobody's going to be buying these things anytime soon unless you know you got money to burn. But um, I really like the, the the sort of OLED versus you know LCD. It's it's kind of like it, it it fills my my heart with uh, you know my hankering for plasma gets replaced by one right. for OLED. So. Right, OLED gets back into that really gorgeousness. Yeah, finally. That is know. almost wet looking, right? Yeah, it, it looks beautiful. That was yeah. the, that was that was the beauty of plasma. It had a certain yeah. certain juice to it. Exactly. You know, just it was just different than crystals. Right, right. When plasma goes away, we get a new thing, and so it's it's it costs it's, a little bit more though. Good. Yep. All right, folks, that's, the, uh, that's kind of the definitive take on where things are going with television here at this show. And it's, of course, the center of CES still uh, in, in so many ways. The biggest, the biggest, and the biggest in every definition at the show. I want to thank David Katzmeyer and uh, thank you for watching as we've digested TV here at CES 2015. I'm Brian Cooley. We're live from CES in Las Vegas.